And welcome to another episode of LA Fish Guys. The first part of the new Neptune Trident installation is to create an additional network access for a brand new Apex brain. Unfortunately, the old Apex classic uh, brains uh, are not compatible with the new Trident. So what we need to do is place a uh, router switch down underneath the tank here in the house uh, to split uh, internet access, uh, which will continue to run uh, the Apex Classic on the tank inside the house, and then we'll end up somehow snaking uh, a network line out into the garage uh, so that we can then convert uh, or, or add, should I say, a new Apex 2016 brain to the system out in the garage. We could go Wi-Fi with the Apex 2016, but Jim's got really poor Wi-Fi reception in his garage. Um, we could have added a hotspot out there, but instead, uh, my preference is always to hardwire wherever possible. Um, so we got a little network switch that we got set up here, and I've now got that wired into the existing network, and the classic Apex from this tank is wired into the switch. So now the next step is, is to get the cable from the new tank in the garage, or from the frag tank in the garage into here, and I've just run a little hanger, and hopefully Jim's got some electrical tape, and I can drag that wire through the chase. Tape the network cable. Already got the network cable run to where the apex will mount under the other tank. So now we get to try to pull this thing through, and it's going to be a tight squeeze. We'll see how that goes. This is the area where all the lines, the water lines, the cables, uh, the lines for the uh, uh, renew. renew system, um, the airlines, the who else? Got the ATO lines. Got the ATO lines and all that. They all pass through a fitting uh, or a chase down there inside that goes between the wall. And then that in turn leads out here to the new coral tank, which is where the new Apex 2016 brain will end up being placed, which in turn will run the coral frag tank inside out here in the garage. As mentioned, the older classic Apex brains are not compatible with the new Trident. As a result, we're adding an internet network hub so that we can extend the reach of my internet connection out to the garage where the new Apex 2016 brain and Trident will be located. So with the network cable successfully passed through the wall, it's now a matter of separating the coral frag tank and all of its various electrical components off the old classic system so that he can begin to reprogram all of those outlets for the coral system onto the new 2016 Apex brain. And while many of the functions of a new Apex 2016 brain are similar and intuitive, it still requires not only a new energy bar of its own, but the reconnection and programming of many of those outlets and their settings, which to someone like Scott, who has done this before many times, is still an involved project. Okay, so while he's updating the operating system, we can do a little bit of maintenance down here in the way of cleaning some of the probes, the existing probes, and we added an ORP to this as well, yes? Yep, ORP is connected, probes are scrubbed, so we'll, as soon as the update is done, we'll calibrate. Um, I've got most of the program now, um, other than alarms. Uh, so, yeah, it's all set up. The ATO for this tank is running off of that breakout box and is all programmed. 
So, yeah, everything is looking groovy right now. The only thing left to do is going to be to calibrate that, calibrate the dose, rather, calibrate the probes, and set up our trident. So while that's uh, updating, we might as well get our trident in place and get the tubes connected. That'll be the first step. So, fancy trident packaging. We have our calibration, or rather our uh, reagents here. The calibration solution, which we won't need for a few days. We have the sample tubing clip. So, and that will be used in a few days after the trident has been running for a bit. This would be our tubing and our one link cable. We're not going to use one link since we don't have a, uh, well actually, yeah, we won't be using the one link since we don't have an EV832 on this system, so. Set that aside a moment. So we have our, this is our, the black one is our sample tubing, and the clear one is our waste tubing. Sample tubing is going to clip into the reservoir here, or rather into his ATO tank, or rather his sump. Get my back straight here. Just kind of put that in there. And clip that into his weir. Need a jug for the waste line. On the back of our nose. Oh, there's the pretty baby. Our pretty nose, yes. We've got two tube connections here. The black one will be for our sample line. So we'll take the sample tubing here. And you can't cut these lines, they got to remain the original length. Instructions will connect black sample tubing to the little bar connection here. That's all the way on. And then we have our waste tubing, which will go on to the waste connection here. That's better. All right, so then we got our little region drawer here. While we're at it. Let's get your uh, your uh, power supply and the um, USB or the uh, Aquabus cable. Which actually, I have an extra Aquabus cable over here. And those phone alarms he's getting there—that's for. The apex, the new apex, is sending them alerts because it thinks the temperature or the te or whatever is out of whack. And since we haven't calibrated anything, rather pH is out of whack. So since we haven't calibrated anything, it's kind of wigging out. And I we did our update there. Aquariums, living works of art that are relaxing and beautiful. However, tell someone you have one, and they will have one of two responses. Aren't they a lot of work? Or, I had one once, and everything died. This is where Neptune Systems, a pioneer in the aquarium industry for over 20 years, has been changing the discussion with their monitoring and control systems. It was in 93 I got really big into uh, aquariums and reef tanks in particular, and uh, there were some controllers on the market However, they were just, you know, outrageously expensive, you know, well over a thousand dollars for, you know, rudimentary kind of control. And so I, I decided that, uh, you know, my background in electrical engineering, I could make my own controller. Made a prototype of it and took it to uh, uh, some of the fish clubs that I was in and uh, showed some of the folks there and they wanted to buy them. There was kind of a, a, a dream or a glimmer of hope that it could be something bigger, but I always thought, you know, you sell, you know, 10, 20 a month, and that's kind of where you're going to top out. Despite the allure of Silicon Valley right in his backyard, Kurt decided to see what his prototype could really do. 
We started advertising on Reef Central and we did third page size and FAMA to, to full page and you know the phone just rang off the hook. It's like, wow, advertising really does work. And, and, and so then I knew that work out the kinks in the product and the next generation really could be uh, you know, quite strong. Realizing that his strength was engineering, not marketing, Kurt reached out for help. When I came to Neptune, I knew I had to soften the product. I had to soften the company away from being a technical, geek kind of oriented product into something that everybody could use on their aquariums because I thought it would make them more successful and I really wanted to get it into their hands. We felt 2016, this is the time to bring out the next Apex. The design of the outside of the Apex was just as important to us as what we did on the inside. So the new mounting system lets the Apex flip up and you can easily see where all the cables go. It then drops back down to keep stray water from entering the electronics. Underneath are many of the same connectors found on the previous Apex, things like switch inputs and your variable speed ports, and even Aquabus, so all of your existing modules and accessories will work with this Apex. We've also added salinity monitoring as well. And of course, for monitoring the health of your aquarium, there are the connectors for pH, ORP, temperature, and there's even a connector for 12 volt input for power outage situations. So it's actually quite amazing how many things we put into this new Apex to monitor the health of your aquarium and to control everything that you need to control. But what we really did was listen to all of the customer feedback and put some things in there like Wi-Fi. So now you have Wi-Fi if you want to use it or you can use a wired connection. One touch uh, firmware updates, we now call it the Apex operating system and with one touch on your mobile device, you can update it. With the Energy Bar 832, you can see how much power each and every device on your aquarium is using. You can then monitor that for a day, make some changes to say your lighting schedule or your temperature, and see how it changes the next day. The Energy Bar 832 has three built-in one-link ports. This means you can connect up with one cable our wave pumps, the dose to dose elements in your aquarium, and future products that we'll come out with. On the new energy bar, there are indicator lights that show you when each and every outlet is on or off. And they also will blink if you happen to be pulling too much current on any one outlet so that you don't overload a circuit. We know that tens of thousands of aquarists around the world count on the Apex as a critical component to their successful aquariums. This new Apex gives us the platform to continue innovating for our customers so that they can be more successful with less hassle. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein, and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is myfishtank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF, to pine, to oak, with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. Next time you're near Long Beach, California, take the time to stop in at Age of Aquariums, 2642 Cherry Avenue, just off the 405 freeway near Signal Hill. Age of Aquariums carries a full line of dry goods, supplements, and exotic equipment. Age of Aquariums also carries a wide assortment of living corals, coral frags, as well as fresh and saltwater fish ranging from the usual, the unusual, and the bizarre. Age of Aquariums is located at 2642 Cherry Avenue, Long Beach, California, near Signal Hill. Open seven days a week. Call 562 438-6252 or visit ageofaquariums.biz So, your cool nano reef tank is doing great! But you've got an algae problem? Consider the drop from Santa Monica filtration. Seven sizes to easily fit into the filter compartment of most nano tanks. And just like their bigger cousins, the hog and the surf, 
all use air bubbles and LED light technology to grow algae. Algae that consumes nutrients and that algae replaces itself at no new cost to you. For more information on Santa Monica Filtration's drop, hog, and surf algae scrubbers, visit santa-monica.cc. All right, so it's very important that before we connect the Trident to the Apex um, and before we power up the Trident, First of all, we got to get the uh, reagents into the uh, Trident. Um, also, we need to make sure our Apex is updated, but well, we've already done that. So there's three reagents in here. There's an A, a B, and a C. And it comes with a couple extra of the, uh, I believe it's the A and B. We've got an A region. We've got an A region. We've got a C region. And a B. And you'll notice these are colored and they're also labeled. When we pull out our drawer here, right, in here there are three caps with little tubes. And you'll notice that they're all color coordinated and also numbered. The first one we're going to put in is going to be our C region reagent so C is green we'll take our cap off the C no oh, I forgot to do Just give it a little shake screw on the cap Set our C and then make sure that the C tubing faces the left side. In there. Like so. Next is our B, blue one. A little shake. Some blue in here. Pop that in. Screw that down gently. To be very tight. And last, our A, give it a little shake. Cap. And that cap on. there and it's important that you have the A and the B on the right side you'll see the tubes come down the right and then of course the C's on the left and we'll gently close this making sure not to pinch any of the tubes in there Oops, if I have the drawer in the right spot. That last bottle is not sitting level. Yeah, it is. No, the back one isn't. that, put our caps, save our caps, save our extra regions there, and then the calibration stuff, we'll use that in a few days after it's been running for a bit. So before we set the trident up, I think the next thing I'm going to do is the calibration of the probes. So for that, I've got the calibration solution sitting in the sump. Uh, that way the calibration solution is the same temperature as the sump, which is also where the temp probe is. So we'll go ahead and start a calibration here. Jim, do you have a scissors handy?
In addition to setting up the Trident for monitoring calcium alkalinity as well as magnesium, we're also installing a Neptune Systems dose unit, which can dispense various solutions. And as its name, dose, D-O-S, means it can dose, D-O-S-E, it also means dose, which in Spanish means two. And as such, it has the ability to dispense two different supplements. In our case, as well as in most, that'll be calcium and alkalinity solutions. And in general, it's two individual solutions as opposed to a mixture of solutions and would require additional dose units for those additional solutions, such as magnesium. And as a separate note, while the Trident can control the amount of supplements dispensed based on its calculations and measurements, it's suggested that in the very beginning, you manually program the dose to dispense based on the results of the Trident, as opposed to allowing the Trident to control it. That's mainly just so you can get used to the unit and its operation. Don't want to have don't want to have is we don't want to have our dosing lines going out um, upstream of the trident because we don't want the readings to get thrown off as the trident is taking samples in the event that the dose started to add solution while the uh, trident was doing a test so we got to be cognizant of that where we put our lines. You'll notice that uh, we added some John Guest fittings to our those heads here. Um, in case you're wondering, these are 3 8 inch female NPT uh, by quarter inch John Guest fittings. And you basically cut the little nipple off the the pointy part off of the dose tip and seal it on with some Teflon paste. And you can use John Guest beans with the dose. Works real good. Right, so that's going to be our head too, the one we're putting in here for calcium. And the other one will be for alkalinity. Just down there, flip away from that float switch. All right, where's our DDR? The Neptune Systems DDR is a dual dispensing reservoir used to hold two different supplements, and it's monitored by the apex and draws from by the dose. In my application, it holds the calcium and alkalinity solutions. All right, so now we're calibrating our dose. We've got the graduated cylinder here, and we're going to run until it gets to 40 milliliters, and once it does, we'll hit next, and it'll be calibrated. And then we're going to repeat for the other head. And that's a calibration function within the apex? Yeah. So it basically calibrates the pump for the amount of tubing that we have. My first step was to prime the tubing by holding the prime button there um, and get water, which is what we have in our dose reservoir right now, uh, just so we can get something going through it for this test, or for the calibration. We're about halfway done. All right, so we calibrated the uh, head one here, um, which will be for alkalinity, and the next step is calibrating the Head two, which will be our calcium pump. So we'll let this thing fill up the cylinder once it stops. We'll enter the amount that it put in here. It should be approximately 40 milliliters. Um, it's going to come up a little short, so we enter the amount that it actually put in there and uh, hit next, and it'll be calibrated. And then we'll replace the water in here with the calcium alkalinity solution. So in this case, I think we're just going to put alkalinity solution in now. Um, since his calcium levels are running high anyhow. Um, down the line, you might want to add an additional dose here, uh, which we can use for magnesium, and we can also use it to add salt water into the system for uh, making up for the uh, 
water that the Trident takes out. Every time it does a test, it's going to use some water out of the tank. Well, naturally the ATO is going to replace that water. The problem is that that's going to over time drop the salinity. So, at some point we we'll probably want to have another dosing head available so that we can program it to add uh, replacement salt water to make up for what the Trident takes out. All right, so that's that. We have about 38 milliliters of aerosol and our 38 in here. And we're all calibrated. All right, now put these little guys back in place. In the perfect world, Jim would have some sort of a tubing holder in there, but we don't. All right, so now we've got our dose calibrated. And as with all the Apex-related equipment, the results of that equipment or test shows up not only on my uh, laptop, but also on my cell phone. So I'm able to monitor the aquarium 24-7, uh, and of course there's also alerts uh, that will come over via text if something uh, ends up going out of whack or needs to be addressed. All right, we're all done. Trident is installed, the Apex has been programmed, uh, we did all the priming, and we actually got a chance to run an alkalinity test on it manually. Uh, and the Trident came back with about 7.8 dKH, which matched Jim Salifert tests and the HANA alkalinity test. So we're real happy with that. The results is pretty much spot on. Um, it's now in automatic mode, so it's going to test alkalinity four times a day, and it's going to test calcium and magnesium twice a day, and uh, that's basically it. So I'm about to go home, and stay tuned because we'll keep moving forward, and uh, there'll be some other Trident installs in